precipitation, precipitation reactions. This is a demonstration, uh, it's found in the Heinemann textbook and it's called slow motion precipitation reactions. Um, it's a relatively dull name for it, I think, slow motion precipitation reactions, so I like to call it the invisible wall demonstration. It involves two um, chemicals dissolving and forming precipitates. So let's have a look at how it looks. The idea um, with what I want you to do is try and use um, this information and try and write a um, full chemical equation and an ionic equation while you're watching this video. What we've got is um, lead nitrate up the top there and potassium iodide down the bottom there. As we add them to the solution, what's going to happen is they're going to dissolve into the solution and disperse through it. As they disperse through it, they're going to be a part where they meet in the middle. And when they meet in the middle, they form a precipitate. You can see it's starting to form there, known as the invisible wall, because it looks like a wall's forming from nothing at all. But really, it's the fact that the potassium, sorry, the potassium iodide from down the bottom here um, dissolves and disperses through the water, and then the lead nitrate dissolves and disperses through the water here as well and forms our precipitate there. What I'm going to get you to do is to stop this podcast and then write down a full chemical equation and an ionic equation for this reaction. Once you've done that, um, resume the podcast and you'll see the actual answer to it and you can correct yourself and look at where you may have gone wrong and where you may have gone correct or right. So pause it now and we'll get into All right, you've done it. Let's have a look at what the answer is. First of all, chemical equation re yeah, products, sorry, reactants goes to products. So we'll look at our reactants first of all, are our lead nitrate and our potassium iodide. Put a plus between those two, put your arrow in, and we look at what our products are going to be. Now to form our products, we need to swap over our anions because it's a displacement reaction or a double displacement reaction. So that means we get lead iodide and potassium nitrate. Now, notice the iodide here has a 2 next to it, but it only has a 1 there. Okay, This is due to the charge of the lead ion. The lead ion has a 2 plus charge and the iodide has a negative charge. So we need to write our formulas according to these charges in the ionic compounds and according to the laws that they abide by. So be careful with that. It's the first issue where you might go a bit wrong and obviously it had a two here next to the nitrate but now it's only got one nitrate there that's because potassium has a charge of plus one and nitrate has a charge of negative one so you only need one of each to make that compound now even though um, this is a stable compound we know we haven't got we need two of um, the iodides over here and we need two of the nitrates over here to make this um, a balanced reaction so we're going to balance it up by putting a two here and a 2 there, and that balances all these things, so we, we abide by the law of conservation of mass. Um, moving on, so this is our full chemical equation. Notice we've got states in here, aqueous, aqueous. I've made a mistake, this one should be solid, okay? Um, that should be solid, it's not aqueous. And then aqueous over here, because this is our precipitate, the lead iodide is our precipitate. Um, I'll play that again just to make it look pretty cool. Now, moving on, we need to make our ionic equation. Now, we've got to look at what is aqueous on both sides of this equation. Aqueous here is your potassium and your nitrate are both aqueous on this side. Remember, this should be solid. Potassium here is aqueous and nitrate is aqueous there. So what I'm going to do is just going to highlight those things so you can see it here. Potassium is aqueous, nitrate is aqueous. Potassium and nitrate both aqueous. That means these guys are your spectator ions, you just take them out of the equation, which leaves you with our lead 2 plus ion, our iodide ion, and our lead iodide solid. As I said, this should be solid here. I've done it wrong, but I'm explaining to you why it's wrong so you understand it a bit more. All right, that is writing full chemical equations, remembering your states, remembering your balancing your equations, remembering balancing your ionic formulas. All right, and then that is how to go from a full chemical equation to an ionic equation by taking out our spectator ions that are aqueous 
on both sides of our equation. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to doing some more of these in the future. Thank you.